Next on City Spotlight, the focus is on Charleston with the Mayor of Charleston, Brandon Combs, and Scott Smith, Charleston City Manager. We will discuss some of the successes of 2015 in Charleston, recent city ordinances and what they mean for the residents of Charleston, and the impact of the state budget situation on Charleston moving forward. It's all things Charleston. City Spotlight starts now. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Thank you to all of you for joining us for City Spotlight. Today, our focus is on Charleston. And joining me today is the Mayor of Charleston, Brandon Combs. Hello. And Scott Smith, City Manager of Charleston. Hello. Gentlemen, thank you for coming back on City Spotlight. No problem, thanks for having me. Last had you guys on, I believe it was uh, early July, and um, Brandon, you were just a few days into uh, becoming mayor of Charleston there, and uh, I remember you talking a little bit about, you know, trying to balance the responsibilities of, of being a mayor and, and, and running your business, and um, what, are, what have the last seven months uh, been like as being uh, mayor of Charleston? Well, first off, it's been a real pleasure uh, to be able to serve the community, you know, that I grew up in, and uh, balancing the two, it took some time. Uh, but thank goodness, you know, there's good employees at my office, good employees at City Hall, and that makes a big difference. Time management, uh, definitely had to learn more significant time management than what I'm used to. Scott helps me out a lot, uh, knowing that I was learning and out of the office, email, text, you know. So uh, it took some time, but, you know, settling in and feeling a lot more comfortable at this point. And again, when we talked back in July there, you know, uh, you held positions within the city, so you're not in completely uncharted territory. What what did you find as the most maybe challenging thing you had to you've had to deal with? Uh, most challenging thing was uh, just a lot more time. Um, you know, I, when I was on city council, granted, you're still spending a lot of time, but as mayor, there's a lot more meetings. There's a lot more you ha have to be here at certain times, and a lot more engagements that you get invited to to go. And and so once again, it comes down to a time thing. You're just doing a lot more than than typical. And so you've probably got a routine down as far as being able to balance all aspects of what, you know, mayor, business, life in general, and yes. having someone with, like Scott, who's, you know, been with the city and, and, and his operations, probably makes your job a little bit easier. Uh, helps out tremendously, yes. And uh, Scott, uh, let's ask you a question here about, uh, was it was a tough summer for Charleston, you know, losing Larry Reynolds when we did, and uh, Brendan stepping into the, sh you know, the, the position of mayor, and um, it's been business as usual? Yeah, it really has been, uh, both at the council level, obviously with the mayor. Uh, I think everything uh, at the staff level, um, I think we worked really, really hard uh, immediately after uh, we learned of Larry's passing, uh, and Larry would want us to do that. Uh, we rallied the troops together. Uh, we had a couple of former mayors. Uh, I was, of course, in Florida. I think I mentioned that when I was here last time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sort of felt stranded, and I couldn't really help, but I was trying to help remotely. Uh, but we really did a good job, I think, of, of getting the council together, get, getting them unified, uh, getting their support, obviously, and, and Brandon's willingness to, to step into the role. And then I think our administrative team and really all of our employees just rallied around everybody to make it, uh, to make uh, what was really, really a tragic and unfortunate situation um, uh, into, in, into, a, into an environment that was as positive as it could be. Uh, and I think uh, we've worked really, really hard. As you say, uh, business as usual. Um, you know, the city still has to run. The council still has to uh, oversee policy, meet every two weeks. Uh, and we did that. Um, and, um, um, you know, uh, uh, done all we could to make sure that uh, we didn't miss a beat, so to speak. That, and I think, again, that's what Larry would have wanted. Yeah. Um, I really believe that. Both of you guys mentioned that. Uh, do things the way that Larry had done and, and just f follow that model and it seems like things are are going well for you guys yeah all right before we talk about now 2016 uh, Brendan some highlights of 2015 in Charleston um, well 2015 you know obviously I came in there halfway through but we had a lot of good things come out of it uh, I mean it, it was it was a productive you know a very productive year as far as the city goes um, you know, we got to bring on Jim Dunn back to the council after Larry passed. He was a, a great addition to the council, 
and uh, you know, getting his knowledge and 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 some of the things that he had brought in the past was was a really good thing. Um, you know, overall, I feel like we at the end of the year was hitting a stride as far as business goes. Um, right after the I mean, now I'm going to 2016, but when the first week of 2016, I think we had several meetings with uh, some larger things that are wanting to come to Charleston. Um, obviously cannot say, but you know, it, it just, the momentum that we are running with at the end of 2015 just is carrying over into 2016. And I just feel like, uh, you know, Charleston is, 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 is on the map and people are looking to Charleston as a good place to relocate and a good place to come and, and do business again, so. And I agree with, I agree with the mayor having Jim come back on council and just the experience, the history and time on council uh, really helped stabilize all of us and being able to rely on Jim to, to field those questions that oftentimes we would go to Larry on and Jim too when he served on council having all that history under his belt. Why do we do something a certain way 10, 15 years ago and being able to bounce those ideas off of, off of, a, of, a, of, a, of a council member uh, and in particular in this case Jim I think has been helpful. Okay, and you know, I mean, something else that I want to add is the relationship with EIU and the city. Right. And I'm not just saying this because we're on WEIU. Um, Dr. Glassman and I are, we, I came in, he was new, I was new. And one of my first meetings was with him mm -hmm. and Scott. And uh, we have come together and gelled together. And I think that that's uh, good for the community as well. I mean, that's something that I'm very proud of in 2015 is how hard uh, you know the city worked with EIU to uh, make sure that it's a good positive relationship and that's something that I want to highlight as well. Excellent and uh, questioning I have some questions to you about about Eastern here in a little bit but I want to talk a few city things first and uh, let's talk about some things that you guys have discussed in your city me city meetings re recently. Uh, the waiving fees, uh, building and plumbing fees from uh, building single family residences. Uh, where did this idea come from? Uh, where have you seen this and and why now? Why Charleston? Okay. Well, I'll start and then I'll let Scott add to it too. <clears throat> I know that this is something that's been discussed for many years, even before I was ever on council or mayor. Um, I've talked with past council members and, and past mayors and it's just something that's always been brought up um, over time. And, you know, I just feel like when we sit down, all of us were, were discussing this and right now was the right time because um, you know, we're wanting to attract more people into Charleston. And for every new home that's built, obviously that's more property taxes and that's more tax revenue to the school district, you know, to the city, to other area, or to other entities within the city. And it was just a, a business friendly thing to do. And actually in our meeting when we were discussing this, one of our lawyers even said that he represents many other municipalities. And when they're looking to grow, this is something that they, you know, they have done. And uh, we had uh, Hadley Phillips spoke at the uh, council meeting when we had this, and he said in many communities that he goes to when they are trying to entice growth and just, this is a, a way to say thank you for you know, coming to our community, thank you for developing in our community. And it has been overwhelming support um, on my end uh, for this and you know, a, a huge thank you um, from so many people in the community as, as you know, you're trying to help the community grow and, and change some of the, the landscape, so. Okay, and okay. Scott, your thoughts on, on this helping Charleston grow? Well, like the mayor said, uh, having been to all of our city planning retreats, I think the last one may have been the, probably the 16th or 17th planning retreat we've had. It was a topic for discussion uh, at the council level. And again, I agree with the mayor, the timing uh, you know, for whatever reason in the past wasn't right or we had other issues or challenges that we were trying to address. But it's something at least in the last three or four years has been a pretty hot topic. And uh, again, I, 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 I'm on the uh, state board for managers and, and we talk often about incentives and some of the seminars and things that I attend to learn about the toolboxes that are available to communities like Charleston. We're non-home rule form of government, so we're very limited on the types of incentives we can afford and offer to the community. And this is one of those that we can do and we're trying in a pilot uh, program. And our hope is, is that by offering this incentive that those folks that might otherwise locate or construct just outside the corporate boundary 
will see this, as the mayor indicated, business friendly, uh, development friendly, and, and may give them a reason to look at us a little more favorably uh, when selecting a home site or a place to build. And so, you know, at this time, we've got to try to find everything we can in the toolbox to try to encourage new growth and development, and this is just one way to do that, and again, it's a pilot. Uh, we might find at the end of the 12 months it was successful. We might find at the end of the 12 months it made little or no difference whatsoever. Uh, and that's something for the policymakers, mayor, and the rest of the council to decide. Mr. Pampert and I will provide the stats in December at the planning retreat, and it'll be up to council whether or not they want to extend that or if they want to look at other ways, other means uh, to entice development. But this is certainly just one of a few things that we've talked about and we're trying. So this is a one-year thing, and it just started going uh February 3rd, is that, was that First correct? part of February, yep. yes. Okay, so it goes for one year and, mm -hmm. and then you, you see how, how it went. Right, yeah. right. Okay, any other things uh, recently passed along in the city, uh, proposed things that have been passed of note that Charleston residents should know about? Uh, you know, this time of the year is, you know, all about budget. So, you know, a lot of things that we typically pass that are construction related usually happen early spring. Of course, we passed the, the tax levy back in December and that is an annual process that uh, every December where we place the tax levy up for approval and that's what is the engine behind getting the uh, property tax information over to the county uh, and then they have certain processes and procedures they have to go through with assessments and looking at real property values assigning dollar amounts and then processing out tax bills later this year so okay. our portion of it that's required statutorily is complete uh, we're looking to present and approve a balanced budget again this April uh, I have no doubt that, that we're going to be able to accomplish that. It, again, uh, things, are, things are challenging, there's no question about it, and there's certainly some uncertainty at the state level, which has significant implications on decisions that we make that are sort of out of our control. Uh, but uh, we'll do what's necessary to put a budget in front of council that is balanced, that still accomplishes the missions and goals set by this council. Uh, and, you know, if we have to do more with less, then that's what we'll do. And we'll We'll talk about that here shortly. I want to ask a couple questions involving public works. Mm -hmm. uh, new stop sign there on the north end of the Carnegie Pub Public Library there. Uh, mm -hmm. Why was that put there? It is mainly for safety reasons. There's a lot more children you know, going in and out of the library. And I think there were a few close calls even um, yeah. at that intersection. So it just makes sure everyone stops coming from both ways. I, uh, now, I, now, that you, now that you bring it up, uh, when I was commuting from Tuscola down to, down to Charleston here to work, uh, We'd, I'd sometimes turn and uh, yeah, there's no, no stop sign there, but now that I think about it, probably uh, helps slow down the traffic. Yeah, I, uh, an individual that actually worked for the city uh, several years ago as a contractor was in an accident at that location about a year ago. A uh, pretty serious accident where the individual that he hit uh, that was on a, on a bicycle ended up in the dash and into the windshield and, and, and maybe even totaled his car. Uh, and here just several weeks ago before we passed this ordinance he had a near miss with a, with a, a young child coming I assume probably from Jefferson School uh, at the end of the day and there are a number of kids that really they're going southbound on 5th Street at a high level of speed they're not accustomed to stopping there even though there's a stop sign there and we'd had some concerns expressed to us by the library director and other people on our team that hey we need to look at this intersection and so Again, uh, while some may not see that, you know, that need, mm -hmm. if you're in and out of that library as much as a lot of our people are, and certainly our library staff, uh, that, that need is pretty evident. And, and again, there's a lot more traffic to the library, and there's a lot of children that use the library that go there after school for a variety of programs. And if it saves one life, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And every time I've gone by that, uh, to me, it's a newer looking par parking lot. There's some of us that have been in Charleston a while. They're, the parking lot's usually full, so. Yeah, a lot uh, of activity. Yes, very much so. Uh, other public works matters going on here or that we can look forward to in the spring? I remember in the summer there was some work on Harrison, Harrison there that looks nice and is completed. Anything coming up here in the fall, uh, spring, early spring here that people can anticipate they may have to look out for? Well, we're going to finish that project up. Uh, you know, obviously the road is open. Most of the landscape work is done. We're working right now on a couple of sidewalk sections so that are on 6th Street, both north and south of that intersection that we're about to wrap up. And we'll probably have done uh, weather permitting uh, in the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, again, weather can play havoc with certainly outdoor work this time of year, but we should have that pretty well, pretty well closed up. Nice project, 
uh, multiple departments involved in that, um, both our utility and street crews uh, did a fantastic job there. That, that was primarily all in-house work. Uh, we've got crews that are capable of doing that. As far as this summer, we don't have any projects that are quite to that uh, degree uh, that are going to take that kind of time or that kind of staffing or resources on our capital plan for the summer. But what we are doing, uh, some things that are fairly visual and pretty hot topic is, you know, more trail work. Uh, you know, we were able to complete a major portion of the trail project that we've had uh, going on now for a few years out around the lake. Uh, we just acquired a small section there on the south side of Chris Thomason's property, uh, just directly south of the new Rexdon corporate office, uh, where we're gonna be extending a trailhead that'll connect up over to Sister City Park, the parking lot there. Uh, and so we've got some work to do there. Uh, those projects will take us a while. Uh, we, we don't anticipate getting those all bundled up this year, and so they're a multi-phase, multi-year approach project, but you know, certainly some more work there. Uh, a lot of the things that you will typically see us doing in the summer months are gonna be uh, sidewalk replacement and uh, repairs to existing sidewalks that you know, maybe a little work here or there, we can, you know, we can re-level some sections. Uh, we do a lot of mud jacking. We've got a contractor that comes in and does that. So maybe we've got two panels that are not quite aligned. We can core a couple of holes, mud jack the pavement up to where now we've got a nice smooth transition. So a lot of sidewalk work. There's a lot of sidewalk work planned in and around the community that's pretty visible. So right. both contractors and our own personal will be out doing that. Uh, so those are things that'll be, that'll be fairly visible again this summer. Little things, Brandon, it's probably, you know, people notice the little things. Things like sidewalks. They sidewalks get are huge. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they really are. And, and and our street and utility crews have already been out doing some sidewalk work a bunch last year. And uh, I know I didn't realize how important, you know, side, or how much attention people paid to sidewalks, but they pay a huge attention. And, and the people, thank you for doing this. Thank you for addressing this. There's some that have been that way for 10 plus years, and we finally were able to get to it. And we have a plan. There's a plan of all the bad sidewalk within town. They, I mean, you can look at it. We saw it during our retreat and they're gonna do what we call the worst first. So we're going to some of the worst areas first and fixing them as long as, like Scott said, going to some of the other areas that can uh, be a little bit easier to fix. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, thank you for the update on the public works. So some things going on there to take notice. Um, wanna ask you because uh, it's been almost a full year. We. Uh, state is without a, a state budget, and this is the time of year, as you mentioned, Scott, mm -hmm. where you start to work on the next fiscal mm -hmm. year. And uh, how challenging has it been for a town like Charleston, where you have to, and for everybody that has to deal with this uh, state budget situation? It's challenging, uh, and and I'm not alone in that. All my municipal partners that I talked with last week at our managers conference are are dealing with the same issues. There's certainly some uncertainty in Springfield that certainly plays havoc with everyone's budget, right? Um, and where that can hit you the most is, is a dependence beyond some of the sh shared revenues that, that they do share and, and uh, the trickle down from uh, shared revenues from Springfield. And certainly some of those shared revenue sources were placed on hold uh, last summer, uh, motor fuel tax, you know, some of the other revenue streams that we typically get from Springfield were placed on hold. They have since released some of those monies uh, back to the cities again, which is helpful. Um, but we, you know, we certainly go into our fiscal year 16, 17 with some reservations about shared revenues, possible changes in the state legislative uh, uh, sessions related to shared revenues, revenues that the city receives, um, and any implications that may have on capital projects, uh, future replacement on equipment, personnel, all those things are certainly a possibility. So. Um, you know, one of the things we've had to do this year is put off some capital improvement expenditures, maybe some fleet replacements uh, that we'll hopefully be able to pick up either here at the end of the year, or maybe have to move off into 16, 17 uh, and hope that we can get by. Um, but that's what we have to do. Uh, operationally, we'll keep our doors open. Our public works crews will be out doing these sidewalk projects and all that. But, you know, if we have to hold off on replacing a squad car or, or some other piece of equipment or a dump truck and and have to spend a little more money on maintenance, uh, then that's that's just what we'll have to do. And uh, like you mentioned, uh, everybody's in the same boat, mm -hmm. having to reduce work with maybe a little bit less at the time, and uh, people are seeing this for the first time here in March, so hopefully maybe a budget's passed by then. One of the things I've said, and, and our council's heard me say this time in and time out over the last few years is, you know, we get into tough economic times like this, this is a time for us to hunker down 
and start working on the little stuff. The little things that sometimes slide off the end of the work list because you're so focused on the larger capital projects. We have a work list of a lot of other smaller things that are half day projects, hour projects. That we, can, we can get a lot of that stuff knocked off the list in, in tougher years like, like what we've got now. And so, um, you know, we're back to maintenance mode. I've said that time and time again. Uh, and so if this, if this future, if this, if this uh, upcoming fiscal year is, is a maintenance mode type year, we'll be very productive, we'll get a lot done. Uh, we'll be able to you know, cut costs and, and still keep our, our workforce productive. Uh, there's always work to do. Uh, and some of it may not be glamorous, but it still needs to get done, so. So sidewalk work, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll get done and yeah. pe people will notice. That's as, right. As you've mentioned. Uh, state budget not affecting just cities, municipalities, affecting higher education. We have two forms of higher education in Coles County. We have Lakeland College, Eastern Illinois University. Mm -hmm. uh, people have noticed uh, tough decisions have been made for those institutions to continue their regular operations. And uh, uh, Eastern Illinois University, when, when things affect e EIU, uh, they certainly affect Charleston. Uh, Brandon, I, I don't know how much, uh, I mean, your, your thoughts on what's been going on with uh, EIU and, and what maybe possible implications it could have on Charleston. Well, obviously, Eastern is very vital to the city of Charleston. You know, I'm, I've been quoted saying this a bunch of times, EIU and Charleston are one and the same. Charleston is EIU and EIU is Charleston. And, you know, we, it's one of our largest employers here in, in Coles County and, and, and Charleston. And you know, like I said, it's just very vital. And I just, I've reached out to, uh, as much as I can. I mean, you would think that I'm actually here on Eastern myself because I care enough, you know, about what happens to, to EIU for the implications that it could have for our whole community. And uh, I just urge everyone else to do the same, you know, I mean, let your voices be heard. Um, and, and hopefully they'll, there will be a resolution to it all. I'm very confident in that. Um, but I just hope it gets done, you know, sooner than later. All right, and business as usual. And uh, when we first talked in July, uh, after uh, you took over as mayor, Dr. Glassman, who we've had on the program in the fall, uh, talking with him about some of the things going on, and I know a lot has changed since we had him on last on the show, uh, but he was also in, you know, to a new role. He was probably mm -hmm. a month into his job when you took over. And uh, how have the meetings been going with him and how often do you meet with Dr. Glass? Um, you know, we had some regular meetings, but with his schedule and my schedule being as busy as they are, sometimes it's hard. Um, so we may not always meet face to face, but there are weekly correspond. I mean, sometimes daily um, in times like this, you know, where we're reaching out to one another, uh, discussing the different things that are happening and, and just keeping each other informed on what's happening in the city and at the university. And you know, I commend Dr. Glassman. He's uh, in a very tough role, tough situation. And uh, I think he definitely has, you know, the best interest of heart for EIU and the community. And I've told him multiple times that I really appreciate that. Um, having no other ties to Charleston, just coming here, he's went right into it and he's given it his all. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a real honor to be able to work uh, alongside of him and with some of these, this, these issues. Tough, tough sledding, but uh everybody in the community is, is working hard to keep things business as usual as Very we've, sure. we've said here. Sure. Um, as we wrap up here, I briefly want to ask you about the uh, joint city meeting that Charleston and Mattoon have uh, once a year. I believe you guys had one back in the fall and I had Tim Gover, Mayor of mm -hmm. Mattoon on uh, actually the show before this one. Uh, uh, how does that meeting go and what do you guys get out of that? Well, uh, you know, it's something we started several years ago uh, is this idea of, of, of meeting together at least once a year. Uh, uh, gives an opportunity for the two councils to sit side by side. Um, uh, you know, there's a number of reports typically that are, um, are, are given by uh, staff on both sides. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about a lot of collaborations between the two communities that quite frankly, some folks probably aren't aware of or didn't know existed. And, you know, having grown up here, much like you two gentlemen, uh, you know, I, I remember the times when the two communities didn't talk and work together. And so uh, we've torn down all those barriers. We share personnel, we share resources, uh, we work together. There's a lot of collaborations. Uh, and this meeting is an opportunity to show the community that the two communities are working together alongside of one another. And it gives the council an opportunity to hear some of those projects that the staff is working on. And we bring in other individuals to the meeting, like representations from the school district or from the university or from our economic development partner. 
and again talk about and highlight some of those collaborations and you know uh, the information is then you know released to the media and we get that information out on uh, to our to our uh, residents in both communities and and I think it's really um, I think it's been really really positive um, because I think we're all one uh, much like the mayor said about EIU and the city and the community um, we can't forget Matt Toon in this, and they're a major economic driver in Coles County, and we have to be alongside Matt Toon, uh, side by side, sharing resources, personnel, equipment, in, in, in any way, shape, or form that we can. Uh, we always have known that our police and fire departments have worked together, they have to. Uh, but there's a lot more than that that goes on in the sharing and the collaboration and the working together that maybe some just don't see. And this is a chance to, to share those stories and share that information and enable the two councils and mayors to talk openly about other projects or endeavors they might want the staff to work on. So I found them to be very productive and helpful in, in sharing that message with, with our communities. Thank you for those comments. And yeah, Brave, it was, it, it, it's a real honor to be able to do that, honestly, because you know, once again, like Scott said, growing up here, there, you know, even not too long ago, you could, it was hard to play in football or basketball, you know, and, and I think Mayor Gover made the joke that it wasn't too long ago that if we were in the same room together, we probably had our fists up, you know. Um, but honestly, out of that, I realized how much collaboration there is and some of the stories that were told. I mean, there was a, a story told there about a gentleman whose life was saved because of the collaboration between Charleston and Mattoon Fire Departments. So there's a life that's, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that we really do work together. We get along together and uh, people might not always realize that, um, but it was really neat to hear the police chiefs and the fire, fire chiefs and talk about how close, you know, how closely knitted that, that they actually are. And so it's just a blessing that, you know, these two communities can come together and work together. A lot going on with Coles County, Charleston, Mattoon working together, mm -hmm. Charleston, Eastern Illinois. So uh, good, good information, gentlemen. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Brandon Combs, the mayor of Charleston, Scott Smith, city manager of Charleston. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. having us on. Yes, appreciate Thank you. It. appreciate it. And as we wrap up here on this edition of City Spotlight, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Charleston. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.